we're in the home stretch. Seven months ago, we started off with 35 millimeter cameras, and today we've moved all the way up to large format. In today's video, I'll show you the Linhof Carden LT, which is basically a monorail version of the Technicarden. And I'll tell you a little bit about the 77 millimeter leveling pan tilt head as well. Uh, I'll start out telling you why I got it and what sorts of situations this is uh, an appropriate camera to, uh, for. And then I'll show you how everything sounds and feels. So I got this camera uh, back in community college in preparation for an advanced black and white photography class where we had to use large format cameras. And one reason why I got this was because monorail cameras back then were really, really cheap. Uh, nobody really wants them because they're so big and bulky. Uh, so uh, you, you could like, just you, you could not sell these on eBay just nobody wanted them they, they just were not in high demand so that made it easy for me to buy uh, another reason why I got a monorail was because uh, they're good for learning large format photography because you have movements all the movements you would want on the front and rear standards and that, that helps you see like what all the what all the movements uh, do to affect the image. And another reason why I got it was because it just looked really cool. This is like the nicest looking monorail camera out there, I think. Uh, you would you would definitely not want to get this if uh, you wanted to do something that involved a lot of walking. But uh, there are still a lot of situations where you don't need to walk a whole lot. And you, you can take this outside the studio to do all sorts of things. Like, let's say that you are doing uh, a landscape or urban photography where you're working from a car most of the time. Or if you're doing portrait sessions where, you know, uh, you had scheduled something in advance and you weren't, you know, doing street portraits where you're just wandering around the streets looking for interesting people or anything like that. Uh, or uh, let's say, oh, architectural photography, where you're going specifically to one particular building to uh, take photos. So uh, you can basically do anything where you're not going to walk around for a very long time. Uh, if you were going to do that, you should definitely get a field camera, which is much more popular. Uh, th this kind of camera is also good if you're uh, doing something that requires uh, a lot of extension, like uh, using long focal length lenses or um, uh, doing macro photography uh, and, and like you need like that sturdiness that uh, field cameras generally don't uh, do quite as well when they're at, when they're at full extension so uh, so anyway that's why I got this camera cheap gets the job done that, that for, for what I needed to do. Uh, as for the, the sound and feel of the whole camera, uh, the Lindhoff cameras of course are really really sturdily made and high quality and it, uh, all the movements and everything is really really smooth and nice to use. So here on the standards uh, you've got like these uh, extensions on the like the base of the standards. Uh, this one's only friction and it's pretty smooth although it sort of binds and jitters if you're going real fast or uh, going in certain directions. But the one on the rear, this one's geared and it's generally smoother too because of the gearing I think. And let's see. Uh, 
aside from that, on the uh, on the bottom rail right here, you've got a flip lock like that, which is pretty which is pretty stu which is pretty uh, tight and firm, but the the plastic tips help uh, like you, you help you get a good grip on it. So uh, this bottom flip lock. Uh, lets you do the shift movement, which is very smooth, and there are no detents on the zero position. So there's a little cutout window on the front and back where you can see the numbers uh, on the scale here. So uh, you can tell when it's centered, zeroed out, and oh, I'll turn this around so you can see this other flip lock. So this other flip lock is for the swing on the front standard, and uh, there is a zero detent on this, so it snaps into place right there. Uh, as for the vertical movements, uh, you have these two flip locks for the, um, the tilt, and then this is for the rise. So. This is a lot lighter, but still firm and, and it's clicky uh, compared to the the, the swing, uh, the shift knob. So, uh, so here, a uh, nice feature is this lock because if you don't hold it into place and you have a, a heavy lens, this can flop down and like, uh, like maybe maybe you'll like bump the lens or something. I don't know. Uh, but here you have a lock and you just pull it and then you can uh, tilt the lens forward and then it snaps at the zero point and then you can also go backwards and then everything is really smooth and secure too so for this one you flip it up and then you can lift up the front standard and this is all like friction movements. It's not geared and it's like really, really smooth. Uh, let's see. Next, uh, I should show you how uh, if you have, if you have only a little bit of extension uh, on a wide angle lens like this 120 millimeter, if you have like, you know, uh, just a little bit of extension for focusing at, at infinity, uh, there's not really a whole lot of room for movements. So you, you can get like, let me see here. Uh, right now I'm like only at five millimeters right there when I go side to side. So that's hardly anything. Um, in this case, um, you would want to switch out the accordion bellows for uh, a bag bellows. So there are these flip locks at the top, which are uh, firm and springy. So it's really easy to take off the bellows. Do that and then you can put on a bag bellows so it looks like that and let's see so there are these little catches on the bottom and then you put them into place and then Uh, stick on the front standard like that okay and for the back let's see so get them down into the catches and then oops oh yeah yeah I should I should be looking at it on the front but anyhow so lift up the lock and put it back like that 
Uh, and then after you have the back bellows on, you can bring the standards really close to each other. Right. And then here. So here you can like, you can move the standards freely, much more freely that way. And let's see, I'll show you how to do the swing, even though the lens is really close to the back. So, uh, the next thing I should show you is all this stuff on the back. So, here on the back, you've got the other flip latch uh, to take the back off. And this is um, a rotating back, which just means you have to take it off to turn it sideways. Uh, a revolving back lets you change the orientation without taking off the back. So it's like a, it's like a Mamiya RV67 where you just <laughs> rotate it to the side like that. But this is a basic camera. It only lets you rotate the back. Uh, also uh, on the back, you've got like the spring loading mechanism right here. So uh, you can put in the film holder uh, uh, into place. And if you want to take off the ground glass, you have these two locks here. And then you pull this out like that. And to put it back in, you just gotta uh, press it back into place and press uh, down or to the side. Um, these locks are for uh, putting on roll film backs. So if you had one of those, uh, you would put it inside and then you would like uh, press it in. It's basically the same as the Mummy RV67 backs too, where they have the the locks that like move in that slider thingy right here to hold it into place but you don't you don't use this for when you have just the ground glass uh aside from that it's basically it um you've got bubble levels here and here for when you want to change the leveling so you can go sideways like this on the tripod head. And let's see. You also have another red knob here where you want, you want to recenter the whole monorail. And these, le these levers are like really smooth and sturdy. So this one, it's, it doesn't have like any like detents or anything it's just held in by friction but the this one uh for the for the side to side tilting this one sort of has a, like a, a a release a detent or something like that so it like pop it like pops out uh, to lock and whatever um also oh uh, you have like this big plastic lever for the tilting, so you can only tilt the, the camera down. So uh, that's like one thing you should probably, uh, um, you know, take that into consideration. If you want to uh, tilt it up, you can like, uh, you can you can reverse these by taking off this uh, stop right here with the screwdriver. So you can like reverse the whole thing. It's, it's kind of a headache, but you can do it if you wanted to. So this is like the most ridiculously overbuilt sort of tripod head I've ever seen. It's, it's a lot like, um, uh, uh, other large format tripod heads in that regard, because it's like really thick plates of metal and everything and super smooth too so 
like and sturdy smooth and sturdy and everything so it can hold on a lot of weight i think this camera is about 15 pounds so you definitely need a really sturdy tripod and tripod head for this sort of thing so uh the, the viewfinder the, the ground glass uh it has a fresnel and uh, you can't really uh, i can't really show you exactly how bright it is but i uh i can just sort of compare for you anyway uh to focus on it you're gonna need a loop uh this is like a mamiya 4x loop and you'll also need uh, a dark cloth this is the one that the the view camera store makes so it has like a stretchy uh, opening here put it on the back of any 4x5 camera and you've also got a hole on this end putting your head in <laughs> uh, oh, did it fall off? Yep. And then, oh, uh, where's the lens? Okay. You're just gonna have to trust me when I say that it's bright and evenly illuminated. So, uh, the corners are bright too, uh, and the image is like really crisp and sharp and if I wanted to get in there with the loop I could focus in really close like that so uh -oh. so I could like do critical focus like that with the loop. So, uh, anyway, so the viewfinder is really bright and contrasty, and it's easy to focus with if you have the loop on. So, that's basically it for this camera. Uh, I would say that if you are just starting out with film photography, you should not be discouraged from trying out large format because if you know what you want to do, then you'll definitely be able to decide if this is an appropriate camera uh, for your needs. Like they say, uh, horses for courses. So if you already know what course you want to do, why not just get the right horse for it? Uh, they're not that expensive compared to some other uh, 35 or medium format cameras out there so if you want to give it a try go for it uh, especially monorail because they're cheap there uh, there are also some really cheap view cameras out there like the intrepid and the, the chroma cameras and all these other uh, new large format cameras so if you want to give large format a go the there it's it's pretty easy to go for it even though people say film is expensive you don't want to waste film and everything it's, it's all, all things considered it's really not that expensive uh even compared to medium format so if you're thinking about it go for it anyway uh thanks for watching and hope you have a nice week